What's up everyone, this is Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, we break down episode 5 of the Halo TV series, and alongside me, as always, is the Marsman crew, so I have to welcome you back. Uh, so to my left is Haki. Hey guys. And to my right is Langella Kill 75 What's up everybody? So listen guys, uh, in this episode, we are going to start off with a non-spoiler breakdown of the episode so that if anyone wants to watch afterward, they're more than happy to. We're going to give our ratings alongside why we are thinking it's a positive and negative. Uh, and then we'll go on to our spoiler section, which will basically have our just general breakdowns of everything that we saw from uh, from the episode itself, right? So what I'll do just to kind of start us off today is say basically... What is our general opinions about the episode? Just some general ideas of what you felt. Did you like? I mean, you don't have to go into likes, dislikes, because that's really the ratings. But what are your just general feelings? And I'll start out first. I feel like my biggest thing from this episode was that it was a much needed step in the right direction. I felt like the the episode, and we talked about this last week on, on last week's roundtable, that it was drifting closer and closer to being unbearable, right? And last episode was like one of those things that was like, okay, was it horrible? But it wasn't great either um and this episode kind of took the step in the right direction where it kind of made me feel that okay this is a good episode right this was a good episode and it made me feel a little bit more like okay i i kind of like some of these aspects that they're continuing to push forward so it makes me feel a little happier knowing that maybe i maybe could i jump the gun a little too much on certain aspects and maybe they're they're still developing some of these that makes me happy to see that they're not just like letting it wash to the like you know they're actually they're actually gonna put some work in to some things that i really want them to do now granted i know they're not writing episodes as week by week i know this has already been filmed and been made so the whole point is is that maybe i uh, i should wait a little bit longer to just crucify the show um but there are some things that you definitely have some questions on so that that's kind of my input uh but Langel kill i want you to kind of give me what you thought or just some general things you felt about this. Before we get to our official rating yeah i think overall it was the best episode that we've seen so far i won't give my ratings on it but i do think it is the top episode we're more than halfway through the show so it was like you said an important step um for them because like you said we kind of were hitting a wall with the show last week wasn't awful it wasn't great it was average um and maybe slightly below average and so like you wanted to see can they put together some episodes to draw to draw up um, you know, some attention from us. And mm -hmm. I actually think, again, and we won't go too deep in spoilers, you had, the, in my opinion, the best action sequence um, of the show so far. Um, so that is something to look forward to. We've been talking, we've been slamming the table about a battle scene and with Chief involved, you get that both in this episode. So that's an important thing. We'll go over more details on things that they should and shouldn't do, but that's my overall thought. Yeah, so, uh, so Haki, what did you think about the episode? Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to kind of agree with you guys. agree with Langella Kill that um, this was probably the overall best episode. Um, you know, you had good action. The story continued in a, in a positive way. Um, there was more positives than negatives um, is, is, I think, one of the biggest takeaways. Um, and there was nothing really that weird that happened that like, <laughs> made me cringe a little bit. So at least in my eyes. So. Um, I thought it was a positive episode, and if they keep the action going, and maybe a little bit longer, I'm not going to complain, but a little bit more action, they're taking positive steps. Like you said, Marsman, and they're going in the right direction, so let's let's keep it going. You know, what do they got? Four more, four or five more episodes four, left. Yeah, four more episodes okay. until the season's over, so it ends at nine. Um, and so, listen, I want us to transition now to our official rate. I want us to give you are what you thought about the episode and give us the reasons why you gave that rating so I'll, I'll go in a round table Aki, we kind of ragged on you in the previous episodes about how you're the the shining light the positive outlook uh the 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 light you know the bright sun compared to our dark clouds on the show so what is your rating of this episode and why did you pick it? yeah so again uh, just to go back my ratings were a little uh you know a little confusing just because I was using different ratings, but, uh, or different, you know, I was using like video game ratings or what have you, but, um, you know, this one was the best so far. Um, I'm going to go and I'm kind of backing down my ratings a little bit, but I'm going to go with a seven, eight. 
Um, I think that's a respectable score. Yeah, all my other ones were in the sixes. Um, I think it got a seven eight because, like Langella uh, Kill had said, big action scene. It was probably a ten minute scene. A lot of things were happening. Um, they had a lot of good CGI. There was one part of the CGI that was a little sketchy. That's going to be like one of my negatives, but um, really good action. Um, and they continue with the Spartan program, which I thought was super important as well. Um, but yeah, I, I thought this was, like you guys are saying, this was a, a step in the right direction. Um, and if they keep going with the action scenes, the show can be much better. This is what I thought the show, Halo show was gonna be like right off the rip. Yep. At least you know, at least a little bit of action, not two or three episodes with no freaking action. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that, that's, that's going to be my reading and hopefully I can give higher ratings for the next four episodes. I feel you, man. Well, listen, I think that's pretty respectful. Uh, Angelo kill, what do you think and why? I'm at a 6.8 out of 10. And, uh, again, I gave the first episode a six. Um, so this is my highest rated episode so far, and I'm going to be piggybacking on a lot of things that Haki said. The action scene was the best one, um, that we've seen so far. We need more of it. Um, I think the show is at its best when chief is talking less and fully equipped more. Um, and when that happens, the show is better. And when you have less Quan, the show is better. Um, and so, you know, if they keep going that route, which is what you see in this episode, um, you'll probably see more positive things for this show. Um, the reason why it's still at a 6.8 and not into the sevens or into the eights is because they still do some dumb things that drive me crazy. Um, it just feels like a real corporate, um, you know, push for no reason. They just try to drive Master Chief to be a character that is unrecognizable at times. So that's what really still hurts it. Um, and we'll go into more in the spoiler section that I dislike, but that's why I'm at a 6.8. Best we've seen so far. Um, but it's not hitting like that. Oh, you know, I'm really, I was really satisfied with that episode or like, man, that episode was awesome type of stuff. Yeah, so listen, when I'm looking at this episode, I'm, I'll break it down the positives and negatives, and then I'll give my rating. I think the, for the positives, and I agree with both of you, this has the most action so far in the series, which is what we've been looking for a while now. This is this is a sci-fi shooting you know, story, right? And for three-ish episodes, we barely achieved and shoot a gun, right? And and I think that's kind of, kind of messed up because he's the main character, he's a soldier, and he hasn't shot a gun. But now he shot a lot of guns. He shot them in the right ways, and he did a lot of good things here. Um, and I and I can agree with both of you to feel that you know, Chief talking less and and just having his armor on does make him more like the Chief that we know and, and love. And the thing that I really liked about this is it had a lot more Covenant. Right, we've been itching to see the Covenant alien species make their appearance. And boy, let me tell you, they did in full force in this episode. And if you if you like the Covenant, then this is an episode for you. Right, you saw every race of the Covenant uh, for the most part, and I think that that is a, such a good thing to see here going forward. And what I really like the most about it, positive wise, is that this is the most lore accurate episode we've had up to date to this point uh, for the most part. Um, and I really think that that was what makes this show better and better is that whenever it has lore accurate things, it makes it so much more fun as a Halo fan because you're like, all right, yeah, this happens, right, this occurs, and it makes it feel more connected to the actual story when it's closer to what was written in the books and the games. And that's why I really like to really like to see. And, and the show for the most part didn't drag. I felt like there was always something important happening for the most part. And um, I feel like that was something that was needed to be because the previous, previous episodes were dragging. They were slow. And it felt like this one was not slow. It felt like it was pretty quickly. Um, the negatives, Quan scenes are horrible. And there wasn't a lot of scenes of Quan, but Quan, anything Quan's in, just make drags it down it's unfortunate because soren is a great character but swan uh, i say swan Quan being with soren just almost brings down his character too because like all the scenes that soren's in Quan's in it just her character arc is just stupid um the chief superman <laughs> superman punch is one of the most ridiculous um, things and i know they, that they have a weekly cringe and they, that was they this find they, they find a way to make you cringe a little there's no master cheeks this week which is good but then they give you the, the master chief superman punch and and boy did i get a little annoyed when i saw that a little annoyed is saying it lightly i was kind of frustrated as in you have all these good aspects and what's crazy is that if you're watching the beginning of the episode that's when it happens and then it jumps to the better part so you're like 
my god what's happening it's cringy and then it just gets better from there um and the mock and we'll talk about the last scene but there's some parts of this that don't really go into it spoiler section so with all that being said i was really drifting with this rating um I'm probably going to go closer to, in my opinion, a 7.5. I'm a little more positive on this one than I am in the previous ones. This is clearly the best episode of the series. I think the reason why I went so high on this was because of the fact that, one, the action sequence is the best part. Like It, it, it gave you everything you wanted to see. It, it appealed to the Halo fans where Chief is doing you know, things that he does in the games, Hijack and Banshee, doing attacking with every weapon. He's a master at all these different guns. There's so many Halo guns that were brought into that combat scene that made you feel or get in the feels, and they all had the same sounds as the games. Um, Chief, even though there's some scenes that Chief doesn't seem like himself when it comes to emotion, there are scenes that he legit acts like the Chief, and you, it's almost like it's like thank goodness, thank goodness that he did that because that sound that's like a Chief thing that would do. The Spartans were really good here. Um, I thought the combat, even from the Marines' perspective, was good. They really stuck to a lot of lore, and I really enjoyed that. And even the parts that were slowed down because of story arcs, they they clung to parts that I really liked, and I'm glad that they did. And obviously, of course, no Master Cheeks, which just makes it a little bit more better um, in the overall rating for me. Um, but I, I honestly think that this is a definitely a bright spot. And I was a little, I was nervous. I was nervous. We watched the um, the preview for this episode last week. And boy, I got like real nervous. It's all that. It's really what they're going to go like, in this direction. And nowhere did I see the large-scale combat that it was. And we're going to go into lore discussion next. But I felt more relieved watching this episode from the pre from just watching the preview last week. That I really hope that this continues going forward. Because this is exactly what you wanted to see. Now granted, some dumb things do occur. Not saying they don't. But for the most part, it was exactly what Halo wanted right they wanted action sequences they wanted some better story writing they wanted chief more like his main character now he's not perfect but closer to what he's supposed to be and i think most people most halo fans were on board with that um but yeah so i think that's gonna top us off for the non-spoiler discussion we all gave our ratings we all gave what we we liked and disliked about the show so if you don't agree with our ratings please make sure you drop your rating in the comments below and if you haven't done so yet, please drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content because we, if you haven't noticed, Mars Man Gaming, we do a lot of content videos as well as reviews like this and streams daily. So please make sure you join us on the next stream and watch one of our other content videos on the channel. We really appreciate appreciate your support. Uh, but if you are looking to, to see what the discussion on the story, the, the spoiler discussion, please stay tuned for the next section. But if not... Thank you guys for watching. This is Marsman Gaming. Now on to the spoiler discussion. Well, guys, spoiler discussions here, and I like this episode. I I thought overall that you know they they did a lot better than I expected them to be. Because let me just tell you, uh, Paramount has found has found ways to get me annoyed than I didn't ever expect it. If you were to tell me before the season started that three out of the five episodes you'd be seeing Master Cheeks in some way. I would have been like, what? Like, well, you're out of your freaking mind. Why, why would they be showing nudity? Chief's, Chief's ass in an episode before. Um, but boy, they, they proved me wrong. And um, But this episode had no cheeks. There was no cheeks here. And uh, a lot of facial cheeks, but they're not cheeks that I, I thought was going to happen. Um, and I kind of want to talk about the different aspects of the, of the episode and then kind of get what we thought about it. So... The first, the, what was weird about this episode, and you don't really notice until you start watching, it's only 45 minutes long. It, this is the shortest of all the episodes so far, and it was the best one. And it was kind of annoying because part of me feels as if this was Paramount's Plus's way of dodging spending more cash by shortening episodes and having just a lot of action and pouring all the money into the scene and this episode for the action. And what gets me nervous is that episodes will probably have less now because of the fact that they spent a lot of cash on the cinematic piece they did. But I want to talk about the different aspects. So in the first 15 minutes, we have kind of around two to three major arc lines. The first thing that we see is part of Chief's origin story. And a lot of it has to do with 
uh, Catherine Halsey and Captain Keys are walking around like this, this school playground that was on Hereditus 2. And there we see Chief, who's a young kid. He's seven years old, brolic, picking dudes up by one hand, uh, making sure they don't fall off the, the, the bouncing beam, whatever you want to call it. Um, and Catherine oh, Halsey. It was, like a, it was like a bridge. It was like, was like, a, like, it was like one of those high. toy. It was those toy like, those bridges. <laughs> what kind of well, place set like, is that? It's like a, it's a place. That, it, it, well, they have those places. We have seen those before, but usually they have. feet high. But usually they have safety harnesses on in real life. Yeah. So like that one doesn't. So Chief, like just like how he, Chief just literally just grabbed the guy's toe and by just like by his picked foot, them up, just him straight up. up picked them up like he was frolic and they were like they were window shopping for part possible Spartans uh, in the future. <laughs> And they saw this dude and were like, well, I think we found one candidate um, because he's just straight up just grabbed the dude by his foot and just lifted him over his head like he was nothing. Um, but I liked, I actually liked this scene. I thought, because you know why? This is lore accurate. Now, granted, they forgot to add in some other parts because they showed in the previous episode, like the whole part where Halsey is like betting Chief about flipping the coin. Like that combined with that playground scene is what makes the first scene that Halsey meets with Chief. Like Captain Keys is with her, right? And Halsey meets with Chief and he starts betting, like saying, oh, I, I bet you can't get these coins right in a row. And Chief gets them right every time and it shows that he's lucky, right? And that's what Chief's story arc was that he's not only is he expert in all these things and he's like top notch brain, like smart and all that stuff, but he's lucky, right? And that's what makes him different compared to everyone else. He just has his luck about him. Um, and I kind of want to get your input because I, lo I love that part because I said to Langella Kill off, off screen, that I wish they added this other part to the, the scene when they first meet Chief. And then I got it. I was like, thank you, goodness. Like, thank goodness that they actually showed it because this is a cool scene, right? Um, I want to get your guys' opinion about it, though. So, Angelic Hill, what did you think about that first opening scene of, like, Chief's background, his origin with Catherine Halsey and Captain Keys, uh, basically seeing Chief for the first time? Yeah, I mean, just adding to the background, it, you know, wasn't too long and dragged out, so... Um, I think it was another good one. Um, and uh, you could see that, you know, if you're not a Halo fan, you're kind of curious on what they're doing there, but that's exactly, they're, they're looking for candidates for the Spartan program. Um, they're obviously traveling to different planets. Um, and that's how they stumbled upon John for the first time. And then it's kind of like disconnected where the scene that you saw in the previous episode was obviously after that uh, playground scene um, where they tested them with uh, flipping the coins. So um, you know, they, they've been monitoring him and then, um, we'll talk about it later, what they actually do, which is kind of the dark side of UNSC, um, to start the, the program. But that was another good, uh, opening flashback. Um, and I think it got the message across. Yeah. So hockey, what'd you think about this? Yeah. I mean, I would agree, you know, pretty much exactly what Lange, uh, Langella kill said, uh, it was quick you know concise right to the point um obviously it was funny like seeing him like an arcade cane just like crane grab <laughs> yeah. you know like but um yeah it was a good scene um and you got to see you know chief obviously as a as a young kid um and and see how he not only was he lucky but he was kind of like the good guy too you know like they were the other kids were trying to make the one kid fall and and he kind of helped them out um and you know they uh, Halsey saw that and, and you know was super excited and then again yeah the, the next scene when we talk about that is is you, you see the UNSC like when Angela Kill said isn't really uh, all that good for yeah. some reasons you know but. yeah and listen I'll provide the lore background because you know I got the Halo Encyclopedia I can't grab the book with me right now but <laughs> trust me I've been studying the lore my like for my since I was seven right I, I I've been knowing about all this stuff for a long time now but no, I agree. And what's interesting is, is they kind of broke up the, the background scenes in the very beginning to give you one scene. And then in the next 15 minutes, they give you another scene, which we're going to talk about later. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of like this, this, the show is trying to do the Game of Thrones thing where they just break up like a bunch of cut scenes all over the place. It makes people kind of get confused times of like, what the heck is going on? Um, and I understand why they're doing it to try to bring intrigue to like, oh, there's so many storylines happening at the same time. I get it. It's just sometimes like you let, why don't you continue that? those scenes like so that maybe instead of having it later on you combine all the background scenes beginning and then you have the the you know make all the tense intensity be right at that right once the the the, uh, you know, the credits start with the opening credits start because that's how like it gets people hooked like oh crap crazy but I, i'm not going to criticize them on that yet the next part i want to talk about which i do they do deserve some criticism for 
was a Soren and Quan arc. And they're on Madrigal. Basically, there's a total of around six minutes of Soren and Quan, right? The first three minutes was basically Soren is all annoyed because the bike broke down and he's trying to, like, you know, get fix it so they can get the hell off the planet. And he's annoyed because it's broken. And then he's like, Quan's like, oh, no, Quan's like, yeah, I'm going to stay here and fight. And he's like, no, the hell you're not. You, you belong to me now because you lost me my ship. You lost me all those that money, so you're going to work off the money. Handcuffs her to the bike. He says, I'm going to go get us another ride to get us off this planet. We're going to get out of here by sundown. Like, stay here. And she's all annoyed and all stupid stuff. Um, so, I, generally, I'm sure our, our feelings about this are going to be pretty brief. But um, and afterward, basically, and I'll connect both because they're technically still in the first 15 minutes. When Soren, um, when Soren comes back, uh, Quan is basically, you know, hiding, right? He broke out of the out of the handcuffs. He's hiding under like a hood, basically. In sand. He's in, like, sand. in sand. Yeah. She's hiding in sand. Um, and then she basically breaks out, electrocutes Soren, and then With the, the scene prod. ends. The, the pet cattle prod that she took last uh, episode. From the, from the last episode, and she basically the scene ends with her aiming can hand cannon at Soren, and it kind of gives that feeling like, oh, what is she gonna do? I thought this was stupid. To be honest, this scene, in my opinion, was just dumb. It, it kind of makes no sense because it just makes you, and me and Joko said this to each other when we were watching, it just makes you feel that Quan is an idiot. In every way you think she does, he's a moron. Like, it feels like... Now, granted, I don't think Quan as the actress, like, the, the girl that plays her, is, is bad. I, I just think, like, you're making her... I know she's a teenager or whatever, but, like, you're making her a moron. Like, I get acting out of emotion. Like, that's part of what Qu the Quan arc is supposed to be. But you're making her look like an idiot. You're not giving her, like, any sort of, like, redeemable qualities, right? Like, she, well, she's trying to get revenge. Uh, kill her dad. But, you know, like, Soren is, hasn't been a bad dude this entire time. He's been helping you the entire time. And all you've been doing is basically screwing Soren the entire time. Not helping Soren. Not really le following Soren at all. You're just, like, just abusing him. Now... I don't, we all know he's, she's not going to shoot Soren. But the the highest chance is that we and I, this is what I was thinking that they would basically handcuff him just like I think Bill Kill talked about. She would handcuff him to like the wheel steering, not steering, but to the car while they're in the car or something, and she's going to drive to like go find the Mystics. That's what I think. So. But but overall, this scene, this this little arc, this scene was stupid. It was not well not well written, and I didn't like it. So Haki, what did you think about that this whole Quan? Quan Soren debacle of of you want to call it. So what did you think about it? Yeah, I mean, I, it would have been way better if they took those six minutes and added six minutes more of action. I get that would have costed millions of dollars, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, made the episode much better. Um, yeah, I, I must. I can only imagine what you know Frank's thoughts are. Langella kills is uh, you know Quan's story arc is dead. There's there's no. I just, I don't think, like you said, she's not a bad actor, but like the writing is just consistently bad for her, you know? Um, again, Soren, one of the coolest characters. And the one positive thing about the scene is you got to see like his scars on his arm. Yeah. Um, you got to like see like he really got messed up by the UNSC when he dipped, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that that whole arc with Quan is just, it's, it's, stupid. One of the it's just stupid. Yeah. It's just go and like you said it's bringing down soren's arc and soren's one of the coolest characters oh i want to see soren and chief like in battle together even though soren can't wear his armor I, i'd love to see that but you know they could have used that six minutes elsewhere yeah i agree uh langella kill what did uh what did you think here oh i mean i made the big mistake of last week saying you know how the they were making the quan arc more interesting um they just went <laughs> They just went in the complete wrong direction yeah. this time this yes. week and, and made me so uninterested. Um, I just like wanted them off the screen. And it's sad because like we talked about, I think Soren is the best character so far um, in the show. And even he can't carry this arc so yeah, far. So um, like, I like his Gross. personality. And when, you know, he fixes the, the dumb thing to me is like the ant got killed, right? Quan's aunt um, by Venture. She's not looking to get revenge on for her dad because if she wanted revenge, she'd go after the Covenant, right? Because yeah. that's the one who killed her dad. So she's really doing what her dad wanted, which was free, free Metropol. Um, so that's she wants to go see the Mystics or whatever, but she doesn't even bring up the Mystics, right? She talks about fighting. 
Um, which again, like we're last episode, you were talking about going to go see the mystics. So like she, she, she goes over to Soren and she blames him for ruining the bike, which doesn't make sense. You know, he like got you out of there when Venture was trying to kill you. So like shows no gratefulness at all. And then like, when she gets handcuffed, like that's fine. She was hitting the handcuffs with a rock, and at times she wasn't even hitting the hitting handcuffs. It, she wasn't even hitting. She was like hitting the side of the bike, um, which looked so stupid. Like, wait, what are you trying to do? But she gets out. She cattle progs Soren, and the pistol thing was just so dumb. Like, it, it's so unbelievable. You really think like she's yeah, gonna catch Soren? Like Soren saved her, and that's what makes her just so like it just makes her so poorly written. Mm-hmm. Soren saves her, but she's gonna cap him with his own can can. Like, even if she's, like, going to leave him to die, why wouldn't she just leave him? Why does she have to cap him? I yeah, don't understand it's, it's the stupid. purpose of capping him. No. It doesn't make any sense. It, it's, it's, again, forcing tension that is just not there. Yeah. And, like, that's the part that is just – it's about poor writing. And, and, man, it's almost like they're trying – and, and it, you hear after the show, like, the writer's like, why don't they like Quan? It's just like because you write her like she's so unlikable. Yeah, you, you, you make, make her, her look so, so unlikable. You make her so stupid. She's just like, and, and I, you know, anyone that's going to watch Game of Thrones, he's like me and Joe Kill said because I know how can you never watch it. But it's like the beginning of the show, Sansa Stark, where like every yeah. time, every time Sansa speaks, you just get like you just curl a little. Like, what? Stop. Shut but up. like obviously like, they, they had like, a plan for Sansa that changed, yeah, and they did like, a great job with her. Yeah. But like I, I, I honestly. I haven't seen anything with Quan to give me that, like, you know what? I kind of like her. You know, because well, basically it's just like, it, it's bad. Like, you're doing, it just makes her look stupid. You know, like, you know what? You, you could have just ended the scene where, like, just have, like, you know, she, not aiming the gun. I think if you don't even aim the gun at Soren, then, like, at least give, like, the sense of, like, maybe. Well, like, like, what if she pockets the gun and takes the yeah. keys? Yeah, it's not like that. You know what I mean? Like, you take the gun. Yeah. Like, walk toward the she car. had him at gunpoint. It, yeah. well, well, like, like, no what one, we, no one is going to think that, that she's going to cap Soren. Like, the, the, you writing that, never, no one ever, like, oh, I wonder if she's going to cap Soren or not. Like, she, we all know she's not. We all she's, know and she's if she not. did, it was, it's like the worst malfeasance in It'd the world. the worst the, story thing that you could ever do. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you just wrote that in to try to create this fake. Tension, but like hey, fake like mystery, like oh, is she gonna cap him? Like we all know she's not. So stop trying to BS us thinking that she is. Just I, I agree with you guys. Like just take the keys and take the gun and just leave him there and just start walking toward. It, it was a massive waste of six minutes. Yes, it, 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 massive waste. Honestly, if you had to see the whole episode without Quan and Soren in it, I would have been okay with it. Just have more episodes, more even if you're not having it toward the action sequence. Having it more towards the Halsey, like uh, the Halsey Chief, like origin story stuff. Like I would have been cool or with that. Lee Halsey Keys or the Halsey Halsey Keys story, Key stuff, that story stuff that was there. I would rather yeah. that. And rather instead of this like stupid, stupid scenes, it just wasted time. I felt like yeah. they needed to add like, oh, we needed to make sure we go Quan and Soren because we're I get it, but damn, arms. they did like they butchered like, it. What a waste! Yeah, what a freaking waste just of time. It. Oh, let's move on to the next one, and I kind of like this scene too. That I've seen, I, there's a lot of these scenes I liked, which the chief and Kai talk about emotions, which was basically the kind of set you up, basically. Uh, so chief, uh, this is after the first scene of the flashback, and chief is basically, you know, getting out. He's going out to the main open. He's, he's the other Spartans. This is after they're talking about the plans of how they're going to move the artifact to the ship so they can get it off plan. Um, and Chief goes back, and he, he kind of notices that Kai has the gun oil on her head or uh, on her hair, and it's red. Like so, he notices this, and he's like, uh, "I could tell something's off." He goes closer, and he like wants you to move the helmet, and he sees her take off the helmet. You know, he's got to take his off because you know, yeah. He Here, here's my face. Can you show me your face? Like, let's show faces. Whatever. So they show each other's face, and I li- kind of like the scene because he was just like. He's like, when did you remove your thing? He knew right away. Like, when did you remove your chip? Like, I knew once you, like, once I saw you. And she clearly is having more difficulty suppressing the fact that she has emotions now compared to he is. Like, he is at least a better job. And that's more accurate, by the way. The fact that, you know, Chief does remove his chip, but he is not just, he's not, he's not supposed to be an overly emotional person, right? And that's why, like, this show sometimes does good and sometimes does really bad. Where they'll like chief will act like that, where he's like very stone faced and be like, "You aren't ready for this. Like you're not ready to be back on the 
I'm, I'm grounding you. Like, we basically, I'm keeping you on the floor. You're not allowed to mobilize. Go back to the ship and wait there until we get back to Reach. So we can... And she's and she says a good line too. Like, you know, if I'm if I'm dangerous, then what does that make you? Right? And it was a good scene because I thought that, hey, this is a this is a important moment, right? The the are the, the Spartans are, are losing their emo, the the motion restraints, right? And I think Chief has done th this episode on that part was a good job because Chief is acting more like the emotionless chief, even though if he has the ability to have motion, he's still sticking closer to that when it comes to that scene, and there's some other scenes that he loses that second um but you know i i kind of wanted to kind of mention that because i felt like there was the, the, i really like that scene in general but um what did you guys think about this whole, not only even just the chief and and kai but also the kai emotion the really over the motion and i was a little weary about her being so like like quirky she was like quirky a little bit it was kind of just like yeah. i know that you're like you have an emotion now but like you're acting like a teenage girl like and you're not like you're you're an older you're a woman like an older woman now and you're like tavanic like you're like so uh you know it's like why so do you ever question do you ever question why you don't question and vanix just straight up just like you know i don't like i'm questioning whether why you're giving me like it's like what do you, i wonder if that gun oil got to your head because you're asking me these dumbass questions and lily i was like a part of me feels like and she's sitting there like I look at rolling around like, <laughs> like, oh, like what? Like it's just like it's like I get it. You're having emotions now, but like you don't just act like a freaking weirdo and just like a like a teenage girl like like just being like, like well I know you are, but what am I? Like she's like like what? You're the freaking and Vanek is like kind of us like, this is stupid. Like you're what you're telling me right now is stupid. So I kind of want to get your opinions on this whole Chief Kai, uh, you know, emotions with all the other Spartans kind of just like. What the, what the heck are you doing type of stuff so Angelica what did you kind of think of that scene yeah there's two things um, last week again this was something that made me nervous um, it was either last week or two weeks ago um, when Kai I was I was afraid we were going to get a emotional Kai um, and let's just say this week uh, didn't help my nervousness at all um, for it um, so we did see and, and like I can put up with it if it kind of levels off um we saw not too much of it last week we saw some but definitely a step up in like, the weird quirkiness hey, you don't remember that um, wait but we're, that means we're like sisters yeah like that was weird and now we're getting that Atlanta. You know, do you ever question um and i actually don't mind the questions but she was like it was she was just so quirky about it and even with chief and i get it like you're feeling emotions you haven't felt in so long um but let's i hope it's capped off like, I hope we actually get a little more um, evening out and not continue the quirkiness um, that she showed in this one. I hope that she kind of got a little humbled, not humbled, but like kind of put down um, where she's like, okay, I need to like hide it better. Um, so maybe that's what the purpose of the scene was um, that Chief was trying to show. But I'm also going to say this, there's, there's two Chiefs, right? Mm -hmm. There's the Chief that we saw... And well, let's take the battle chief out of it because that's the best one. There's the chief we saw in the beginning of the episode and then the chief we saw in the mid part of this episode. And they're two different chiefs. I think the chief in the beginning of the episode is my by far my favorite. Um, and I wish, I can imagine CBS is watching this and taking notes, but um, I hope they lean more towards the chief that was in the beginning of the show mm -hmm. where he's fully equipped Gives one-liners, uh, sometimes ignores when people are asking him stuff, right? And you could feel like an old, like Master Chief is there. And even when he took his mask off, uh, which I hate, it's just like purposely trying to show his face for no reason. Um, he spoke to her like, like you would expect Master Chief to speak to Kai. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't an over-emotional thing. It was, um, you right know, like point. Ground, was straight, was just right to, to the, the point. point. Yeah. Um, and I like that. And Cortana is supposed to be more of the personality in that duo. And even he, him giving her one-liners like that. Give me more of that. Give me more the, of the dialogue. Chief. Yeah. Yeah. The dialogue Less lines for chief, more suited up. And I can tolerate the other BS. That's the chief. I like, we're going to start in the next segment about the chief that I don't like. Mm -hmm. um, but that I thought it was, was I like this version of chief in act one. Yep. No, I agree. And Haki, what did you think? 
Yeah, so I'm, I'm glad uh, Langelic Hill uh, hit on that point because I, I thought we, we skipped that. I was going to bring it up. Was I think it was the first 10 or 12 minutes where Chief was fully fully equipped. Um, you know, Halsey was talking to him about the item, like, hey, you got to stay away from the item because um, we don't really know what's going on with it. Um, and you just – he just didn't do anything. He looked it over, He looked over at her. You know, you saw the the awesome Master Chief yeah. that is like one of the coolest parts of the yep. episode is whenever he's in that. Um, he like looked at her, didn't say anything, looked back, and it was just like, oh my God, maybe they watched the Mandalorian last week. <laughs> they, they're writing in some good Chief stuff, you know? Like it was super important that they were able to show emotion without a face, you know? Yes. Um, but then again, yeah, the, uh, you know, Kai showing a little bit too much facial expression when when she's talking to chief and like chief is just like all right well you're not ready to have a yeah, how do you feel about it's that really chief sense. it's just like it's like it's, not, it's just like weird like yeah it was, yo, like, it was yeah, I, I get it you have emotions now but like it, like all right a little too expressive honestly yeah, yeah little, just too, too much, much of facial expression but but maybe maybe Angelica was right maybe um you know they did that scene to kind of uh call her down a little bit you know um, but yeah, hey, listen, Chief, when he's all suited up, he can give you a ton of emotion. He can give you more emotion suited up than without his mask on. Then, yeah, listen, then- and I am okay with the scenes, and they did it again. They showed the scenes inside the mask of his face. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I am yes. fine with that. And I said that last week. I was like, listen, keeping his helmet on for everything else and showing like scenes of his face, like his actual, like how angry he, angry he is. Because sometimes you can't really, you could sometimes tell with his mask on, but like showing his anger through that. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. But, like, it was just like you're taking off his helmet way too much. Last episode, last episode they did that all the time. This one, they are sometimes they just took it off for just the hell of it. But, like, sometimes it wasn't, which is, you know, thank God they didn't. Uh, I want to move now on to the second 15 minutes. And the first thing that happens here is um, the issue that the, they bring into the play the, the issue that they have with with Chief starting to remember some key things and he goes and tells Captain Keys that, hey, you know, Halsey was there when I was a kid in my house. I had a memory about it. And, you know, Captain Keys was there in the beginning. He knew what was going on. He was married to Catherine Halsey. He was a top leading captain this whole time and he knew everything, right? And so basically when Master Chief says, hey, you know, I, I trust you, you know, we've, I serve. I serve under you. You're the captain, right? I, you know, regiment, um, and I trust you. We, we battle together. And Captain Keys knows stuff. He knows everything that's going on, and he, and that's why I got like this scene because it showed like uh, he's in a tough spot. You know, he he doesn't want to like break the trust of Chief, but he's also kind of like, I kind of know everything, dude, and I'm kind of was part of it a little bit too. And you know, I, and she's my wife, and she's really messed up, and I don't want to. And, and he's like, you know what? We'll figure this out after we get the artifact and I'll personally look into it. Now it's weird because I don't know if chief really fully believes them at all. It's kind of like interesting how they reacted after that. Um, but the next part of this was captain keys brings it up to the admiral. Um, I forgot her name about chief is starting to remember this stuff and we need to make sure we address this going forward. The admiral's ready to pull the plug on Halsey and Halsey does a very sly move and says, well, I don't know how would, how would Lord Hood feel about it? And Lord Hood was the guy from, you know, if you're a Halo fan, he's the head of the, basically one of the heads of the UNSC that, you know, from the last from the last two uh, two episodes ago, uh, yeah, two episodes ago, um, two, three episodes ago, was basically saying, listen, Halsey, he has her, he supports Halsey in her decision to, to do the Spartan program. So, you know, basically she's saying, listen, you think you have Juice Admiral? I have Lord Hood on my side. So how would he feel and the rest of the community feel if you're trying to cut me from getting so close to to finally getting this artifact and finding out what it is. you know what i mean like so i kind of like this scene because it was kind of a this is politics done right like you know the second episode it was a whole lot of politics and not really like a lot of stuff that was just boring this was a short scene and they got the point across they got it to the point where the politics was clear and evident and there's there's some some battling going on but at the end of the day, the ultimate goal was that as long as the artifacts in their control, then everything's fine and dandy. And even if Chief is on the border breaking that mold, they can still deal with it because um, Cortana is still there. And I kind of want to get your opinions on this. So, Haki, what did you think about that little sequence between 
Chief and Captain Keys, and then Chief, uh, then Captain Keys, Halsey, and the Admiral kind of like fading art. Heck, do we do now? Because if Chief's starting to remember her stuff, then that's a bad thing for us. So, what'd you kind of think of that? Yeah, I, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was good dialogue. Uh, you can kind of see Captain Keys, like his eyes were like, he looked like hella scared. Yeah, like he, I mean, he's standing in front of the like, greatest Spartan of all time, you know, and like kind of lying to him, but kind of not lying to him, you know, so. Um, and I mean, he gets out of it. He's like, Hey, listen, man, let's make sure we get the artifact back. Like you were saying. Um, and then we'll tackle this kind of together. They go into the, the room talking to the Admiral. I thought, again, that was pretty good dialogue too. Halsey kind of stumps the, the, uh, Admiral or with, like you said, saying, Hey, listen, man, Lord Hood is on my side. There's no way you're, you're, uh, you're taking my funding. Um, and then again, they, the whole family arc of like, I forgot what the daughter's name Miranda, is. Miranda, yeah, Miranda Keys. Miranda, yeah. Like, again, Miranda is like almost as bad as Quan, but she's gotten a little bit better. She's got a lot better, yeah. She's gotten a lot better, yeah. Um, so, you know, she was put on uh, by the Admiral kind of in secret, and then she's taken off, you know, um, which again, it's just like kind of weird, you know? Um, and then, yeah, a Halsey like says something like sly, like, oh, that's the first time we've agreed, on, you know, parenting or whatever, which was like, whatever. But um, again, that political dialogue, it's short and sweet. I'm fine with that. Let's just get to more action, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Angelica, what did you think of that sequence? I'm actually going to disagree with you guys. I like uh, the chief... Uh, keys dialogue i agree with that but i actually really did not like the group meeting um so like you said miranda keys was given a secret uh separate team to study the artifact um and you know keys realizes hey chief is gonna start remembering all these bad things i don't want uh miranda keys to be close to whatever this like she wants her hands clean um the problem i have is how is her hands dirty? You know what I mean? Like her mission is to study the artifact, right? So I don't understand taking her off the artifact, what that ex exactly does. Um, it just, again, feels like a very forced, weird, like tension builder. Um, and then the Admiral right away, you know, when they talk about cheese remembering, she does bring up the point where like, Hey, you said this Cortana thing was going to fix that. Um, and it hasn't fixed that, and I'm pulling the funding for you, right? Like, she didn't set an ultimatum. It, it would have felt much more real if she was like, if you don't get this artifact, like, you know, not even Lord Hood is going to save you. You know what I mean? Like, create that dynamic. It was just straight up, hey, I'm pulling your funding, and then she's like, well, no, because Lord Hood is not going to let you. Um, you know, if you know if this comes out, it's going to make Lord Hood look bad, and he's going to look for a scapegoat. And it's just like, it, it just feel it, it just... It just didn't feel right to me at all. And then the next scene where Keys tells Miranda, you're off, you know, it's just like Miranda, I was thought was getting better. And then when you force that action where Miranda's out, right? For, I don't know the reason, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, it's not like she was part of the pro Spartan program. You know what I mean? So like, it just, it doesn't, it just feels forced. And I actually like it was causing tension between Halsey and, and commander keys. Mm -hmm. Um, but then you're just forcing Miranda and her dad to like that tension. It's oh, just like, crazy. they're just bobbing mm -hmm. Miranda keys around. Like, does she hate Halsey more? Or does she hate now her dad more? Like it just, we started on a good path with Miranda and now it feels like we're taking a step back for like stupid forced family drama. Let the thing develop naturally. It started feeling more natural with Miranda when she went to the artifact, she tried talking to her mom and her mom was blowing her off. And just like, man, keep going with that naturally. Don't force this stupid stuff. No, I listen, I, I do agree with you that this was felt like a little worse to me. It felt like this was like just just trying to make things more attention. It honestly didn't need to happen. So I completely agree with you guys on that. And so if I'm looking at the uh, the next portion, um, the, so now we're there's, there's another part we got to talk about here, and that goes with the next next flashback scene, which I thought was the first part of it was really really cool. Where basically the whole scene is it shows when the UNSC, and this is all lore accurate, and which is what I wanted to see from the very beginning, was basically the UNSC according to the lore had abducted the children at seven years old. 
right? And basically what they do is they abduct them and they replace them with what they call flash clone. Now, flash clones basically means that they're like, they die very soon after they are deployed, right? So essentially that clone of chief as a kid will die like in the next like few months. And basically the parents will think that, oh, our son just died. They're not gonna think anything else otherwise because the clone died, but in secret, they stole they stole John and brought him to the Spartan program. So he breaks out, he gets he gets stopped by Halsey, hugs him, knocks him out, and then he gets abducted and brought back to the Spartan program um, in the Unreach. So all of a sudden, Chief sees all this after he touches the artifact, and now he gets furious, right? And all of a sudden, Halsey walks in, and here comes the best part uh, of the entire show. Uh, Chief sees her and is like, you abducted me. And all of a sudden, like he talk about Chief not having emotion. Chief goes to ultimate emotion. He's scowling like he's about to just like just straight rock bottom Halsey. And so what he does is he Superman jumps to punch her in the face. And Cortana just turns him off. And he just <laughs> like right on the floor. And honestly, I, I was like annoyed. I kind of just like, this is like... Like the episode was going oh, fine to God. this point. It was like there were some things I didn't like, but that part made me cringe. Like there's always a cringe-worthy point in this in this show. They find a way to make it like, why did you do? I what made you think to yourself that was a good idea? Um, and Lily Chief just I just seeing Pablo Shriver like launch himself 15 feet in the air, just like straight up punch Halsey in the face, got me just like what like what? And then just like. She, uh, Cortana, lock him down and just like in mid air, like mid air, just falls flat. Like, not even like, you know, momentum takes him all the way to Halsey. He just like falls right before her. Like, he literally jumps this way and it just, just like that. Like, the physics of that doesn't even make sense. Like, I know he's a super soldier, but like physically, that just he falls flat straight down. So, I, I kind of want to get your opinions on this because this is one of the dumbest scenes I thought of the entire. <laughs> Of the entire show, to be honest, I honestly thought to myself that when I saw that scene, I honestly was getting nervous because I was like, "All right, up to this point, the show's been okay, like the episode's been okay," and then that scene happened. I was kind of, like, "What's what am I watching? To watch after this? Like this is the this is the middle of the show. I'm like, oh no, what it's what's happening for the rest of the show?" And I I kind of want to get your opinions on this. So, Angela Kill, uh, you, you what did you think about? Superman, Superman punch, Chief. We didn't see cheeks here, but we saw Superman punch. So I want to see what you think about. Um, this was clearly the dumbest part of the episode. Um, and it's funny. It's just like, you know, like you were saying, the show was going okay, and then by the end, you know, like I said, I thought this was the best uh, episode of the show so far. But Paramount, CBS, whoever you want to call it, whoever is, you know, writing this and directing this. Um, I don't know the name and I don't care for the name, but they always like, it feels like purposefully every week they want to just put in a moment that you just cringe so damn hard. Um, and this was it. This was the one. Um, I, I mentioned there's two chiefs, right? In this episode, there's the one that is likable. And then this is the act two where to me, it just feels like, again, I'm not saying Pablo Schreiber is a bad act. It just feels he's acting a, a different character than what he's supposed to be. Um, and I default more on the writing than anything else. Um, but again, you, you didn't mention before the artifact thing. Chief was, again, had to take his helmet off, right? And he's he's scowling the, the area, right? He's looking over the area, you see all the different Marines, and then he sees Keys talking to Halsey. Um, and like, you can see, like, and, and like the, the facial expressions, just like, he was like doing like, you know, like he's like snarling. He's like looking around like, like they have to like, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah. and he's looking at that conversation. He's like Cortana. And he, you know, like you could tell like he's pissed off. Um, like, tell me my records, you know, like you have access to all the UNSC records. Tell me mine. There is none. Tell me the other Spartan. There is none. And then he starts, you know, he's, he's huffing and puffing over to the artifact. And then, like you said, you know, touch the artifact remembers all that. And just like, this is pointless. Not the artifact part. I thought that was fine. But like having, it's the forced, I need to see Pablo Schreiber's face as much as possible um, for no reason. For no reason. You can't tell me, like Chief's out in the battlefield 
you have like the guys walking around, you know, equipped. Why is Chief have his helmet off? Why? Like, why? He's not in a barracks. He's not in like, he's not on the toilet. I don't understand what is the purpose of having his helmet off at this point. Like, yeah, just do that. To snarl, to like puff and about, puff. Dude, and I, like, it's just like, well, you're, would, you're, why can't you wear your helmet? Be more secretive. Like, just have it looking at him and yeah. look forward. But like underneath, you get fine. Show me the face that you're making underneath the, the helmet while like while he's talking to Cortana. I wouldn't, like, like, I wouldn't love it, but it's better Cortana, than what the hell show you're me, doing. Show me my art. Show me my data. On, and then obviously the, the, <laughs> like, the famous, the doing? famous Superman. Yeah, and then the famous, you know, like yeah, and he goes like, like his. You like, know, so he goes Super Saiyan, just like jumps in yeah. the air and just <laughs> like, up and he Super launches Saiyan. himself. First off, what the show was trying to tell me that he was gonna he was gonna roundhouse. A woman. <laughs> that's a that's what was gonna happen if Cortana didn't shut him down. He, he was gonna was, roundhouse and Me Too movement the Halo series. He's gonna roundhouse a woman. Um and I'm not saying like he doesn't deserve to be mad, but that's what they were they were trying to tell me. He was launching himself at Halsey and about to clean her off, like clean her out. Right. And then Cortana just boom shuts him down. They leave him there, and then you have Marines waking him up. Like, like not even like yo, chief, medical up, personnel. Yeah. It was Marines. Chief, like you good? yo, yeah, you good? Good, chief. It was just it Wake was the, by... so cringe, and they, it's so forced. Like that. I hope they listen to fans when they before they tape season two. Give us less Pablo Schreiber face and less Pablo Schreiber facial. You know whatever you want to call it, snarling. You know huffing and puffing. Give me more one liners. Give me more stone cold faced. Schreiber and give me the very occasional, you know, when he was screaming, we'll talk about the fight scene when he screamed, when he was beating the crap out of the elite, like I'll take that, but I'm not going to take this stupid snarling. Uh, it's just so stupid. Yeah. I, I know it took a lot, but it was damn. It was, there's a lot that's stupid to talk about. Yeah. So hockey, what'd you think about that? part? Yeah. I mean, you guys, uh, you know, you guys are all correct. I'm just going to agree with pretty much everything you guys said. Um, the, I mean, the one cool part was a flashback, right? I mean, you yeah. really see the the darkness of the UNSC. I mean, they're stealing children, man. It's kind of messed up, but that's what they did. To, they, they try to find, you know, the the. I don't, I don't even know. I mean, they they try to find what the luckiest and and you know and unique children, the smartest child, and and they just yep. took them. You know, which, yep. which is no, no, no Again, yeah. yeah. The the Superman punch was was. <laughs> I mean, at least it wasn't kids kissing or like necrophilia. <laughs> it was like, just, it was just like was, they, they find it's like they have a quota. Let's find a scene to like yeah. get people to be like cringed yeah. a little or annoyed, it or it was like they have a quota for that. Like every episode so far has had at least one to two epi two scenes that just make you like, make no sense. You know? Why'd you do that? And, and this and they, they they prove that they're able to show you know emotion with with a mask on chief you know? yeah that, 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 i agree dude the they fact that yeah on, dude dude they show and you said exactly they showed that they could do this so that means you should off it you don't need to have him snarling you don't have to do that in order for the, for them to show emotion like you just want just play the game you could sell like you 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 could feel what she's feeling like I, i'll even like Halo Five is a garbage story, but like hell, you know, there was a scene in that game where like Chief gets is punched in the face, his 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 uh, mask cracked a little, and when he turned around, you knew like right away, like this dude is pissed and he's about to whip some ass, and he does that like instantly. And outside, I was like, Halo Five has horrible story writers, but they at least one thing they did right. Which is show that you could show emotion without having to take off your mask. Like they could do that. Yeah, it's possible. And Chief's a, and, and I'm sorry. Anything you know about Halo, there's a mystique about Chief. You know what I mean? There's supposed to be at least. You get none of that. Like the, again, there's the two sides of Chief. The stack two side. They're just like, damn, screw everything about that you know about Chief. And then there's the Act One where you're like, they could do it. Like you yep. see it. You see it. That means they can do it. But they just choose not to. Yep. Yeah. I so say one, one quick thing. Mm -hmm. I did think that Cortana shutting him down was kind of cool. Like, isn't that what she was like? She's supposed yeah. to do. Yeah, she's supposed to do. Yeah. Well, if she's in his brain, that's what is she supposed to do? If she's in the suit, she can only shut down the suit. Which so I guess to be all the time. Right? Yeah. Supposed to be in the suit all the time. So I totally yep. get it. But yeah, now that he's 
right this is the, their equivalent their equivalent of that in reality like in what reality is the lore was that you know like how they can armor lock your system like that's yeah. equivalent equivalent if they were doing it the right way they would have had her turn off his armor and then like just yeah. lock him down like but instead since he's in she's in his brain she could just turn off his brain i guess yeah. <laughs> i guess it just basically give him a seizure basically yeah. that's really what they did uh give him a mid-air mid seizure so Okay, um, let's go to the best part, which apparently is the last 15 minutes of the show, which is the combat. Now, this is the best part, and it's honestly out of nowhere, but I kind of like how they set it up where, first off, it was interesting because like, it's like, hey, yo, Chief, you good, man? He gets up, and he's like, where the hell's Halsey? I'm going to go Spartan stomp her in, and they're like, <laughs> I can't, and Carton, I was like, I can't tell you where she is because you're going to Spartan stomp her, and then he goes outside, and then they, they, they get invaded by the Covenant, right? And right off the gate, the Covenant are just whipping ass. Like, the Banshees are taking down straight-up frigates. Like, they're just kicking everyone's ass. The Banshees are... But this is the strongest yes. Banshees I've seen since Halo 5. Um, hey, they have, yeah, they have stronger Banshees in this than they do in Halo Infinite. So, yeah. you know, they, yeah. you know they, they these Banshees are kicking everyone's ass. Then, you know, you know Chief's now in active, like, combat mode. He's like, all right, well, like, Kai, go out and give us air support. Helmet on. Let's get our Let's helmets go, on. Baby. Kai, go give us some sniper support. We're going to go try to bring this artifact with the rest of the Spartans with a warthog, and then we're going to start leading the way, jogging the front, kicking ass, and they're dropping in grunts, jackals. Yeah, baby. Elites were in there a little bit, not really as much as I would like, but the elites showed up in there. Um, the, I thought it was most, one of the most interesting, and, and even Langella Kill caught himself like, wait, what? Like, the jackals pulled out a mini sword, like a knife, and I was like, yeah. honestly, I was like, that's actually a pretty good idea, and I wish they kind yeah. of thought about that in the games a little, because I wonder how annoying would that be to have to fight a jackal that has like a shield and like a mini sword, and you're like, all right, that would be a. I think about a lot of Halo fans, like I watch a lot of content videos about it. They're like, I honestly kind of thought, why didn't they think about that before in the game? Because that would be pretty interesting. But you know, like I kind of like that. The combat was good, and, like. It's gory as hell. Like this is more gore I've seen than even any Halo game, where people's like bodies and limbs. Like the 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 Marine guy gets clocked with the needle, and he's like, ah, and he just explodes. Like you're yeah. like, oh Jesus! Like you know, everyone just get capped. And then you know, Chief just turns it up a notch, where it's like, all right, it's like all right, guys, we gotta go. The grunt hij the grunt hijacks the vehicle, and I was like, yo. And then Chief like, hey, listen, like. It, it was cheesy, but it was also kind of like uh, Chief kind of might say no, that line. It's, where it's he's like, all right, if I drive and just caps yeah, him and just caps jumps him. in. And I was just like, all right. And, then and before like, that, he said, give me a weapon, which yeah. was a famous one when he yeah, walked yeah, out he you know, with the Marine. Yeah. Uh, no, well, he says that he says the famous one, I need a weapon later on, which we'll talk about in a second. But yeah, he hijacks the vehicle, kicks the grunt out, then this, all the Spartans jump in. It was a little, like, granted, and I said this to Joe we're watching, the Spartans are running, like, full on 30 miles an hour, but uh, yeah, it's more, it, it actually long. is, the, but it actually is more accurate than it I'd high speed. It 30, though. That's not 30. That Warhog was moving. But I'm just saying, just more accurate, more accurate. <laughs> but more, I, that's okay. I'll more, accept that. More accurate. Stuff. Listen, if you're, if you're, if you're using Halo 5 speeds, you might be running that fast. Yes, so, they I mean, were using Halo you know, 5 speeds. Like, they were like, Halo 5 speeds. They were more thrust, they yeah, were they're thrust. like more accurate wise. They they're supposed to run like thirty miles an hour, and I was like, all right, you know what? Maybe they're slowing down a little bit and getting up <laughs> in the warthog. Like whatever. <laughs> At that point, like you know, that was the best part. They're just cl yes. they're cleaning. It's like a classic warthog run. They're just killing everything. Kai gets Kai. Then Kai gets hit with that. You know, like she freezes up because she's starting to have emotions. So now she has to see like all this death and dismemberment around her, and she's starting to kind of get feel like panic. A little yeah and it kicks in i kind of like that because it's like yeah, yeah you know what emotion sometimes you can't just pick up emotions and be like perfect with it you know and that's why like chief is different because he was somewhat suppressing his emotions still even with having the ability to that's why he's as good as he is and so he sees like all right kai's down i gotta go help her and like halsey's no no you gotta stay on mission he's like no i'm not letting her die and what's interesting is this is lore accurate. Like not saying that Kai, because Kai is a silver timeline, but they're basically taking Kai character and putting it to Linda, which is part of Blue Team, actually lore accurate, which is the sniper spot. I like actually who she's mimicking. Um, and in the lore, this happens in one of the original books where she gets really wounded in a fight, and basically she shows up and just straight up destroys the tries to kill. Um, and that happens. He's, First off, Chi shows up. He's like, 
let me do let me just be a badass like you know like we all want him to be hijacks a banshee straight up halo 3 halo 2 style you know dro die Rise bombs into a it, phantom. die bombs into a phantom blows up everything and then chief just gets up and i kind of like to see we kind of just like I love it. like just cracks his neck off. yeah does it stuff all cracks his neck like he didn't say anything he just like Takes off his yeah, mask, looking at him. You didn't have to take I it off. I was surprised. Honestly, I thought he was just going to like, oh, look around. I, I was like, but he did. <laughs> he, kept it, <laughs> he kept it on. Just dust himself. I thought he was going to take it off and just like dust his helmet or something stupid. But he didn't. He did the smart thing. He just kept his helmet on. He just like he shakes his shoulders. Oh, I love that. And then Look like everyone, everyone looks around. And they turn it, around. Takes and, off a shoddy. Yeah, I'm saying, I saw more guns in this episode than I saw the entire series so far. Picks up assault rifles, claps one, uh, claps like uh, a, a grunt, throws his pistol at the other grunt, picks up the shotgun, starts cleaning every jackal on the face of the planet, then picks up a plasma pistol. And then, like, the elite's just like, it's funny because, like, part of me was kind of laughing a little bit because, like, so the elite, like, they have all these guns everywhere. The elite just straight up just, like, jumping Kai, just straight up, like, like, kicking her, like, what? She's like chest punching her a little bit i was just like all right and then chief shows up like bodies just bodies just made him, knocks his ass over just straight up punching the crap out of curb stomps him and that's lore accurate that actually happens in that scene in the book where he's straight up because he's, he's he has emotion he's not trying to let one of his friends get killed and because if you don't know one of the lore about chief and why he was so emotional about his friends was because when he was younger they led a mission one of his dear friends dies on mission because he was too emotional. Which is part of the reason why I wanted him to be less emotional was because that's what makes him the way he is. He's not emotional because he realizes that if he does get that way, his friends could die, right? And that's what makes him like the robot as he is. While every other Spartan might be getting more emotional, this dude isn't. He's always on mission because of the fact that happened. But that's why I like this scene because it kind of shows... That as much as him, him and Kai had that little like tiff, they had a little like that little mo word, war of words. You know, he's gonna be there for his crew like that, and he's gonna kill anything that tries to get in its way. Um, but at the very next part, and I feel like I've been talking a lot here. Very next part is probably one of my favorite parts because Kai's like chief, you gotta stop, and then he's like, you gotta get the artifact, and he looks over, and all of a sudden there's an alien ship coming in right by the artifact. He starts. Buck sprinting toward it. It's like that probably the fastest I've ever seen a dude wear our Spartan armor sprinting toward that ship. I was like, damn, Peter, you gotta give Pablo Shriver a lot of credit. He was hauling ass in that. It's hard to do that with a suit like that, but hauling ass. The ship comes down, and boy, was I shocked. A brute chieftain shows up with a grab hammer, swings it, hits Chief, and he backs his ass all the way up to the back. And then he just looks up and he sees him. He's like, I'm gonna need a weapon. And then he grabs the, sh the battle rifle and starts unloading. And they have a little square off. They fight a little bit. And then the brute chieftain grabs grabs the artifact and deuces out. Right. And basically, you know, the, the kind of the, the, the episode ends where and this is where it kind of gets a little hazy. The they're on the Covenant ship and Maki -E just like gotta make it look realistic. Shoots the, the drop pod down, and then she just like falls out. And she while Chief is like about to go clock whoever is out of there. And just her drops out and then she I take his <laughs> and so just looks forced. up. It's like <laughs> just looking up. Like it's just like you don't need to do that. Just like look up. You know, you can have him like he was looking up at it with his helmet yeah. on, and then he's just like <laughs> Like you just like part of it was you looking up with no with helmet on, and then the other half was you with looking at it like you're gonna see something different. Um yeah. but like the one thing I thought that was stupid about that scene was that how does that make it look realistic? Like, she, there's no bruises on her. I thought, like, when she's like, all right, make it look realistic. I thought, like, all right, the lead was going to start smacking her around a little to, like, all right, we just brutalize this human to make it look like she was a prisoner. But, but no, like, she's perfectly fine. Like, she looks fine and complete, like, everything's okay. And so and why, now, how does that make any sense? Yeah. Like, how does that and make there's sense? There's something. We got to talk about that. Yeah, so that's, like, kind of, I want to get, there's a lot of stuff to, to dive into this last 15 minutes because basically I, I just put combat. Because there's so much co cool combat that happened here. It's not really a lot of story like talking. It was just combat one-liners, which is exactly what you wanted to see in a game like this. I mean, in a, in a show like this, which covers the, the video games. So I kind of want to get your opinions about what you saw, what you liked, what you didn't like about this last before we close out the show. So, Lingelka, what did you think about the last 15? 
Yeah, give us more of this. Give us more of this. I'm pretty sure I could speak for Haki on this too. This is what we're looking for. This is what we want more of. Um, So give us more of this. Uh, There's so much to like about these sequences. I love that the Banshees were involved. I love that you saw ships getting blown up. You saw one of the big UNSC ships going down. Um, Like you you just saw mayhem and, and you saw war. Right. That's what you're that's what a war is supposed to look like. Yep. Um, and then, you know, kind of just going past some of the really cool stuff that you mentioned already, which I a lot of stuff that I liked. I'm going to get the artifact. Um, I really liked about the Kai thing. So everyone just assumes that, you know, like, oh, they just have emotions, they're all back to normal. But because they're not used to it, you know, it really hits Kai hard and she sees all these Marines. It was almost like a save it private Ryan moment, um, where you're seeing all these people getting killed and like things blown yeah. off right arm. yeah like you know it was that kind of moment and like she got stunned and she was getting shot and it's like she just she just uh folded um and even chief when you mentioned about that spartan thing he got caught up in his emotions curb stomping the elite um i do think that you know the best thing we were hammering all of us we want to see more alien uh species we got to see grunts we got to see jackals you mentioned the brute those are all great i wish we saw more elites um in this fight but we did see chief fight that elite uh, which was cool and then i love that brief chieftain i hope the brief chieftain is a character and not just some guy they drop down to pick up the artifact could it be a character could it be a covenant character that is what i'm looking for i want to see an elite character i want to see a brood character give me covenant characters because that real increase my intrigue in this story um, and not just have Maki be the ringleader of the covenant with sprinkling some of the prophets, right? Give me some of those. I thought that was so cool having that Bruce chieftain in, you know, with the hammer, gravity hammer. Chief picked up the jackal shield. He went right through that shield and bashed him. Um, like that was all great, great stuff. And then we get to the not so great, right? So I'll let Haki talk about the battle, and I guess we could talk about the ending. So Haki, go ahead. What do you what do you think? Yeah, so I I, uh, I mean, like you guys said, you guys. You know, uh, you know, hit it right on the head. The only thing, so I had two. I don't, I don't even know if I'd call them negatives, but um, when it, you know, when Cortano was like, uh, you know, uh, space slip or whatever uh, has yeah. been noticed, um, the first thing that happens is the crane falls, and I thought that CGI looked really weird. It's like it looked to me it looked weird. It was uh, I don't want to like this is the best part of the episode no matter what. Uh but I thought that was weird and I I don't want I don't know if I'm going to disagree with you guys but I thought the jackals with the swords was weird. I it is weird. It was different. Oh yeah, it was different. I thought it was weird. I was just like I was sitting there like I don't think I've, I I was just like I got to ask Marsh and uh, and Langella kill has a jack lever had a sword like that like no was, well they you know, never had it in the game but, yeah, but you yeah. know like a lot of people were saying like because they have these things called skirmishers which are like the, the jackals from like in your face and attacking you head on and there, some people were like well maybe they should just give those to like skirmishers for like more just like attacking rather than like having yeah. shields which i get but like part of me feels like they didn't have that in the games well, I always felt like, you know what? I never thought about like having jackals with mini knives that's as energy swords and like using that. Like, I feel like that actually would have been interesting in the games to you. I never, I don't realize I never yeah, thought yeah. about that. But it, no, it, I agree with you. It's it never been in the games guard. before. Yeah, it, it caught me off guard. I mean, again, it was, it was definitely the best. I mean, I thought all the aliens looked fantastic. Even the close up on the jackals looked yeah. great. Um, yeah, the whole sequence of them in the hog and everything was cool. The guy getting blown up by the needler, um, was, was one of the coolest scenes too. Um, obviously Kai, like you guys, um, discussed, uh, kind of in panic mode at the end there. Um, but again, the, the whole chief, uh, in just full battle, he had one line. It was, um, right in the beginning, Cortana was telling him, oh, like to the right, to the left. And he was, uh, he said, I know how to play this game. I know how to play the game. Yeah. Cortana. And I was like, oh man, that's a badass line. More of that. Yeah. Let's get more of that. Yeah, exactly. And, and yeah, I mean, the cool, the just straight up the coolest part of that scene was the, the chieftain. Like, yeah, like Langella Kill said, like if he, I, I forgot the names of the chieftains in Halo Infinite, but they had some dope names. Like, it, he needs to be someone. There's no way he's just some scrub that they just dropped down. They, yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah, 
world. I, and this is where I'm a little fearful because, all right, so let's just say they use the, the whole, let's talk about the final part, the Maquis scene. And I said already yeah. that I didn't really like this because it doesn't make any sense. But what I am a little nervous about is my, my idea, the idea that Maki is placement of Arbiter is coming yeah. closer to fruition than I don't, that I would like. Right. And just hear me out. And I, maybe I'm just being a little hyperbolic here, but I think that this brute is going to be the equivalent of Tartarus from Halo 2, like the chieftain that's like the bad guy. And Maki will be like the, the ant, I'm not going to say anti here because she is technically a bad guy, but she is the equivalent of Arbiter being like the enemy of the, of the chief, of the brute, of the brute there, the chieftain. And they're going to be competing for the favors of the of the prophets, and basically, the brute is going to be the bad guy, and she's going to be like, "Oh, I'm trying to do my arc and try to get better," and she's going to get betrayed at some point, and the chieftain will like take the role of Tartarus, and it's going to be Maquis alongside Chief and the other humans of combating them. I I honestly don't like that because. It's, I want the Arbiter. That's what I want. Like, I want the, I want, Maki being a character, in a side character of the story, like, okay, if you're really developing her to be a side character, that's fine. But don't make her to be the Arbiter. Like, that's not, that, that if you want to make an enemy of a lot of the Halo fan base, you're going to keep her as the Arbiter. Make her the Arbiter arc. Like, you know, and I get it. Like, you're not making just to solely help Halo fans, but remember who's watching the show. Like, let's take a poll here. All three of us are Halo fans. That's that's a hundred percent of us here are all Halo fans, right? It's like the it's like the South Park, you know, like like there are, we're all Halo fans here while you're making a content about this video about your show. So guess who's watching your show, guys? Halo fans are. So by are you, you that Halo fans yeah. are watching the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're like, well, this is not just for Halo fans, but like it it, it kind of is. Vast majority. You're naming it your Halo. Audience. You're calling it Halo. So the Halo fans are gonna come because. One thing I'll tell you, like Halo fans can be very like in some cases, some Halo fans are toxic. Some of them are outrageous. Some of them, but like one thing I'll tell you, whether they are positive towards Halo or not, they're all dedicated. They're all dedicated to Halo fans. Whether you like the new series or you don't like, the, or you're like more of a fan of the old series, you're gonna go watch this show because it's a Halo show and you want to see how it is. So the point is, by you creating characters to replace the beloved characters that a lot of these Halo fans have. You're only going to make enemies out of those fans because they want to see their favorite characters be on the show and not side characters that, and let's be honest, aren't really appealing whatsoever. Like, Quan is not appealing whatsoever. Maki is not horrible, but she's also not interesting. Like, she does the first... Before she drops down, she does the finger the finger sword just, like, to pick her teeth or something. You know, and it's just, like, like this character does not give me any sort of, like... You know, I hope I'm rooting for it. You know what I mean? Like... The Arbiter, when you first got the first scene of the Arbiter, you were sitting there like, interesting character, and I kind of am rooting for him to get his redemption. Because I don't think necessarily he's the worst guy. You know what I mean? Like that That's kind of part of me how I feel about it. So, you know, I'm interested. I, I'm interested to see what they do next because of the fact that, that I thought that this episode was the best episode so far, and I really hope that they continue with this momentum going forward because if they do, then I'll be happy to, to keep watching. Right? But if they start doing dumb stuff to kind of like, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a little nervous because they used a lot of money in this episode. A lot of money was used for the CGI here. I'm kind of nervous that they're doing this thing where they're like, let's let's sprinkle a big action scene and then let's give you three episodes of no combat. Right, And then the last episode, because just think about this. They have four episodes left. You can have three episodes of no combat. Final episode is going to be a combat galore because it's the season finale. Like I could see it happening the way that this writing is, right? Well, and I cool. and it gets me it gets me nervous. Now I could be wrong, and maybe they 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 do better at having combat, but boy, it gets me nervous that they might do that because that's just what they've done so far. So I kind of want to get your feelings about this end of this episode, and are you kind of excited for the next one? Um, because I'm a little mixed, but I I'm, I'm excited to see. What I'm not excited next. about what you said. I'm actually disgusted if what you said comes true. Um, but yeah, the, the, I don't know how to feel about Maki. And I was kind of the, the leading the charge on the scared train about this character. And like, I, I really don't know how to feel about her. I think she has a good look. I think she has an interesting, somewhat interesting 
arc. Um, but if she is the arbiter, if, and I, I tend to agree, I feel like you're right. I feel like you're right, dude, because you saw her kind of sweet talking the elite in the cave. Do you remember that when they were looking for it? She's like, you know, you and me have the same energy about uh, what we want. No, 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 enemy. Yeah, same enemy. Right? It was enemy, right? Yeah, or something like that, yeah. And, like, you could tell, like, it almost feels like she's, like, on getting the support. elite. She's, like, getting support Like, she's the on elite. the elite side, you know what I mean? Like, she's, like, part of that elite group. And I I am going to be sick to my stomach if we don't have an elite character um, that we can kind of drive into. I'm not saying he's got to be a likable. He's got to be a good guy. I'm saying, like, give us an elite character. I'm hoping that this brood, like you said, is a brood character, um, kind of like one of the people for the prophets. But I do want an elite. Like, I want characters on the covenant. I don't just want Maki, hopefully this brood, and those prophets like I was talking about. The dumbest part, though, I understand where they're going with this, right? So it's similar to what she did earlier in, in a, an episode ago when they took over that UNSC shit. So when they get the arc, they're leaving, and then they shoot down the drop pod. The UNSC has to be the dumbest human beings on Earth if they're like, oh, you know, let's oh, take her in. Person. It's just, a, it's just yeah. a person that just dropped like she, the, Yeah, just off. a person that escaped. Like, that makes no sense why they would leave. It's one thing if they, like, blew down a ship, right? Like, let, let's say the Covenant set it up where they blowed, blown a ship down and that she's the one who comes, you know, she's the one in a prisoner or whatever, and they bust her out, like, bust her out, right? She's like, make it look real. She comes out of it looking unscathed, and they drop it off after they leave with the ark. Like if that's like not the obvious. most obvious, if, if that's not the most like obvious, Chief mold. looked up. Chief looked yeah. up and saw the drop pod drop, and he's like, "All right, I'm gonna go cap what's ever here." And they walks over, and it's just the human falls out, no scratches, nothing. You clean, most cleanest, no mud, no nothing on her. Not if that's not the most anywhere. obvious trap, like how could you not know that this is not a trap? Honestly, I, I, I like, I honestly kind of want to see her like try it on Chief rather like. Like just rip you know toe, that's rip, not rip, happening. Rip, rip the nail off, like see that nail. Yeah, I'm telling off. you, she's gonna try to smooth talk, Chief. We're gonna have a love scene. We're gonna have a love I'm scene. Go pissed off, dude. <laughs> don't say. That. We're gonna have don't, a. Love please scene. don't say that. I honestly <laughs> am like hurting if that happens. Like I, I'm already hurting like already enough. So don't don't do that. Please don't do that. I I honestly might cry a little if I see Chief having like making love to Maki. Like I honestly would. What what are we doing? Like the two chosen ones, two two cheeks, two yeah. two blessed cheeks are gonna be out there flapping. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? Two like, cheeks. Two yeah, you know it's coming. Like, you know something's oh, coming. No, you know oh, something's Lord. coming. Oh Lord, oh no. I hope not, but I don't know how to feel about her, man. But that that ending scene was just the most obvious trap uh, being set up. Like oh. you gonna see. Like the other one made it a little more sense. Yeah, the other one was fine. This one was is so obvious. I don't know how they like fall for it. I yeah, I agree with you guys. Um, Haki, what do you think before we close out the show? Yeah, I mean, I mean, pretty much exactly what Langelic Hill said and what you said to Mars. Like, unfortunately, I think the next. I'm hoping just the next two are like not. I, I'm not hoping that they're not actually, but I think. I think two of them are going to be on action, right? Like zero action. No, yeah, I hope. I know what you say. You hoping that if you had to choose how much actions in them, I have like two of the four have less action, and the last the two day, have action. Two yeah, like I, I choose, it's more even. Know? It's more even than have. I, like, ha I have a feeling that there's not going to be that much action in the next couple. I think the last two are going to be super actioning, but I'm just hoping that no kiss no no kids are kissing no one's trying to kiss dead people i i hope there's not any cringe and i really 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 hope that the next episode or the next the episode after that is just not a whole kwan and soren story like for 40 minutes just a waste yeah i dude really, if you really do that weird. i honestly might puke like if i see just like a kwan a kwan soren episode which is like, no but just for called, real guys before we close out out of you two, I have my hand up. We're going to get a love scene, and it's going to be the two blessed ones. It's either going to be the two blessed ones, or it's going to be Quan and Soren. What are we thinking? <laughs> no, no, that's not happening. No, I'm, I'm, no, do you think, no. yes or no, the blessed ones, we're going to have a love scene? 
No, no shot, dude. I don't think that. No man. shot? No, I don't think that so. That would be so ridiculous. No, yeah, and, right. the, and no, and I, think, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm, that's how I'm putting my this bet is, down. This is my opinion. Mars Man's putting down the Arbiter one, which this I think is, is right. And I'm, I'm putting down this one. No, this is my Kwan. opinion. My opinion is Kwan. if if Quan, <laughs> so if Haki, eh, Haki, Baki, <laughs> Haki, and Baki. Oh, it was me. Haki and Master <laughs> Chief. Yeah, Haki and Chief for the big love. <laughs> it might be a better love scene. Jesus Christ. Uh, no. So, <laughs> if my opinion is if Maki and Chief will ever have a love scene, it won't be this season. It'll be later on in the show. I think. I think, you think this Maki season, tries to make a move on Chief. If if she does, if she tries to make a move, Chief is gonna like stop it. Like that's if anything. But what it, that, if that were the case, that means it's guaranteed they will have a love scene, but just not that season. It's just <laughs> if she tries to make a move on him and he just like stops her, like that means okay. So this is basically the the foreshadowing that they're going to make love. <laughs> and it's gonna be later on um, in the show. That's what it tells me. Like it just says foreshadowing. Because why would you ever even bring that concept up unless you're gonna revisit that at some? Point? I hope not. I and hope you, I'm dead wrong. And you already showed. This. You I already showed Shriver, You already showed Pablo Shriver and that actress both naked at some point. So might as well have them together be naked because you know they've both been naked too together. So uh, and I just think that if it, it won't happen this season, this season set, if what my belief is, Maki is gonna set up to be. The Arbiter, and by the end of the season, she's going to get betrayed. And next season will be like the arc where she's like going to, you know, be on the good side. And I think that season where, if anything, they're going to make love to each other. Like, I think yeah, that, would make, really that would make more sense. Just because, like, I feel like it's a little rushed. You know what I mean? this yeah. If they just I jump mean, to, be- like... Hey, hey, my name's, my name's John. Hey, I'm Maki. Like, I have a bed right over there if you want to try it out. Like... I, I, I think, think that would be like a little too fast. Like I, I think even, we're gonna have, especially the next two episodes, a lot of exposition. They're gonna interrogate Maki. Maki's gonna play stupid. She's gonna fool some dumb guard in her jail cell. You know, kill him, bust out, try to get the first artifact, and that's 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 where we're at. It's like it's pretty obvious, right? The question I have is, how are they gonna waste our time with Quan and, and Soren? This is um, the, the, want to hear. I'll take my bold take. This is one of my bold take. Right, what I what I think is going to happen with this. All right. Um. I think that one that Maki is going to be successful at getting the first artifact in the in a, a capable of a ability for um the the covenant to grab it. They're going to go back to the ship and they're going to follow in like a very similar storyline like like they did in Halo Three, where they're going to follow them. Or not Hill 3, Hill 2, where they're going to follow them when they go into the slip space jump. They're going to get transported right to the Halo ring, right? Like what they did in Hill 2, where like they chase them through like that new Mombasa city. Remember like new Mombasa where it gets basically like mm-hmm. blown up after the slip space rupture happens. Um, and I think they're going to chase them to the Halo ring. Stuff's going to happen. Maki, the Halo ring's going to blow up like they did in Halo 1. Maki's going to get blamed because she's going to be the one that's the, the one that's come in command. And she's gonna get banished, or, or like I think that's what they're gonna they're gonna do. Is the Arbor. by the end of season one, yes, there's no way that happens. Dude, they're by the going end of they're one. going light speed right now. They're going light speed right We're now. We're gonna see a ring, and they're gonna blow the ring up in one season. I would hate that. I'm not gonna lie, I would hate. That. I, I honestly have a feeling that they will either see the <laughs> ring, and then season two starts with them on the ring, or yeah, that or, that I, I can or agree. They're, they're, they, the not blowing thing, up the ring, or they, them trying to no, but like I can see them like trying to detonate the ring, and because like it's all building up to like the ring. They know about the ring. Now, where is the ring? So, yeah, season I, one. I, I feel like the next I episode, the next ends. episode is gonna be Maki getting the artifact. They're yeah. gonna find where the ring is. Episode after that, or either the end of next episode is them chasing them to find the ring. Next episode, they they find the ring. They have this whole exposition. She takes his helmet off a bunch of times while on the ring, so you can smell the air and stuff. Two episodes of them combating on the ring. The final episode then blows it up. Chief gets no. away. And all of a sudden, we're setting ourselves up for the next season. Aki, Halo, how Halo dumb 2. would that be? How dumb would that be to blow up a ring at the end of the season? I think the season ends on the ring. They find the ring, and season two um, starts on the ring. I'm hoping either that or I'm hoping the end of the season is just them finding the ring. Not even yep. going on the ring. Just finding the ring, season ends, next season. 
Chief. Dude, you, you're going too fast. They're not dude, that fast. They're, they're going to they have a full Chief, episode. They went from Chief. They're going to have a full episode of interrogating Maki. It's going to be at least one full episode. Frank, yeah, uh, just then Maki was, breaks like, out. Angelic Hill. They basically went through Chief's entire story arc in an episode. They went through everything. They did, but they went I'm through, not talking they about went like, through yeah, Chief that, that being an emotionless fast. guy to now that having the most fast. emotion I've ever seen Chief ever have. And then they went through the entire Spartan program. All the Spartans are taking out the, their emotional chips. Everyone's getting naked. We're we're talk, we're going light speed here, guys. And like, Chief, <laughs> and Chief took his helmet off immediately. Yes, and, and we've got we've team. gotten to the point where literally like Soren is already involved. Like we're getting all this stuff, right? Not because we like, got to get a full episode of seeing the Mystics. Like where are they going to fit the uh, ring and blowing uh, up the ring in this? Based they on their see, based on the their pacing, based on their pacing. Their story arc parts happen in less than five minutes. Like, th just like looking at, just think about that. Like, their story arc, like they just like five minutes. It takes you to do a whole big ass thing. Yeah, we're we're going so, but like, there's no way. There's no way if they blow up a ring in season one. Yeah, we're like, we're going way overboard. But listen, uh, anything else, Haki, before we end it, close out the show? Uh, more and more action. Less uh, but before we head out, over under usual. five more cheeks before we uh, close out the show. Over under five. I, I'm going. I'm going over five cheeks before the show. Before this over. Is, I'm going, I'm, oh my god. I'm going under, but I'm we're going, gonna see. We're going, we're going to. We're, we're going to see it. Over, call. guys. We're going over. No. Under. All right. Five. All right. All right. <laughs> Yo, uh, Vinger's got to show his cheeks at least two more times. He's got two, he's got a few more bass in him, right? Vinger's got to do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Um, and apparently, if there's a love making scene, they, that counts as two cheeks, right? So yeah, you know, that is. So that that, that yeah. might even up the odds. Yeah. Right? I mean, like, so all right, they got to go full boat, chief, unorthodox <laughs> chief, and have a love scene with him. After. Okay, so we'll close out the episode with that. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Uh, please make sure if you haven't done so, you drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Uh, and it, like I said, if you didn't agree with some of our hot takes here, or if you think there's going to be over under five cheeks for this season, <laughs> please put your <laughs> put your comment down below and let us know what number you think it's going to be. Um, <laughs> If you like the new layout of the episode, I try to change it up a little bit. Let me know if you like that too. If you don't, then I'll change it back to the old style. But thank you guys for watching. Please join us next time. This is Marsman from Marsman Gaming signing off. Peace out, guys.